Hey guys. Um, for the past few days I've been fighting this nasty, nasty cold, so my voice might sound a little different. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, well, since I'm a little sick with this cold, I'm, I'm not doing much at all. Um, but I thought, you know, since it's Earth Day today, I might as well show you guys my do-it-yourself live rock so far and then, uh, uh, just talk about, uh, live rock in general and... Because since it's Earth Day, in a way, this video is like a way to um, show you guys what you can do, too, to kind of help lessen your impact on the environment uh, with Live Rock. Um, as most of you know, Live Rock that you buy in the store uh, generally comes from the ocean, uh, whether there's a, a hurricane or a storm um, that destroys a coral reef or does damage to it and the stuff washes up. They collect that way. They also uh, collect uh, just, uh, just like they collect fish. They'll go out and um, <clears throat> uh, collect rock and uh, and stuff. So, um, but uh, this rock has been out for over a week now. On uh, Wednesday, out of the water, um, and just the other day, we made another batch of live rock that's curing in the uh, in the cold fresh water right now. Um, soon, I will be putting these rocks uh, in a in a tub or a pool of salt water with a light on it to start getting coralline to start growing everything and, and introduce good bacteria and other little critters that can live um, within the rock. Uh, so, because this is going in my 75 gallon tank, um, I'm saving myself a lot of money. I'm saving uh, rocks to be left in the environment by doing this myself. And like I said, it does take time, but I am very patient. Um, I have put live rock that was dead in my aquariums before and had coralline cover them uh, in a very short amount of time. Um, like uh, even even magnets that I put in there for cleaning, it, it amazes me how short a time it can take for the uh, coralline to start growing. But I wanted to show you, um, I've got holes that I put in the top of, in top of these. And you can't see them in there, but these have got them. Uh, and they have got them too, except for the arch. Or no, the arch one does have it. Um, these don't. But the reason why I have holes, I don't remember if I told you guys, is when I put this rock up together um, in the aquarium, I'm going to have sand about like two inches probably, so you won't see all that. The, the legs here. Right there. Um, and uh, when there's coral growing on this, it'll look more and more natural. Because uh, we wanted a lot of caves. So you can see the fish can... Uh, even come from this side, see my finger, swim around in there and, and go out that way and just uh, we wanted the fish to feel safe and secure so we put arches and caves and the and the same the, the same is uh, like this one it's another arch cave it doesn't look exactly like it's smaller a little taller more of a, a shorter arch that goes higher and stuff but anyways <clears throat> what I'm gonna do uh, is put a piece of PVC piping in this hole when this is all live rock with live critters on there, when I put it in the 75 gallon tank. And then I'm gonna um, putty it, um, you know, bond it to this rock. And then slide, take these rocks with the holes in it, slide it down the PVC piping. So it meets up with this. And you, I, you know, I can adjust this any way I want, but uh, the piping will, will continue out yay high or whatever. Because the 75 gallon tank is like 75 inches or uh, 21 inches high, so I want the rocks to be like 18 inches higher, a little little shallower, a little lower. But um, <clears throat> then then when the PVC piping and then I uh, putty this one to it too, so then it, it's more secure. Um, but then as you can see, I mean, I don't have any more rocks; they're all curing. But picture more of these. Smaller, some fatter, some longer this way on top of each other. And just here's all these hiding places right under here for little fish. And little areas that like come out here for a coral to branch off this way. Another one right here. It's just all over the whole place. I mean, that's what it would look like. Um, and like I said, uh, I could spin this any way I want. Um, but uh, just use imagination and picture more of these on top of each other like that high or so. Or, or so, you know what I mean. Um, and again, the coral growing off this, coming off this way, you know, when they, when the coral covers a rock, it'll look ten times better. Uh, but, uh, I just wanted to share that with you today on, uh, 
on how uh, you guys could do this yourself too and uh, have some fun with it. And, and you know, you can still make them look natural and everything. My wife and I just really wanted to do something different and <clears throat> keep it natural looking but have a lot of arches and spaces and, and stuff for the fish to hide and the water to, to be able to flow because that's one of the most important things of the reef tank too is water flow. Having the water being able to like flow right through here around out here and everything just everything flows um <clears throat> so this will save on the environment too i make my own so you can see some of the holes in that one too and and that down there so thanks for watching uh not only i should say something else too with uh since it's not really reef related but but I try to be as conservative with energy as possible. Um, all my TV, my VCR, my DVD. Who uses a VCR anymore? My DVD, um, my surround sound. That's all hooked up on one strip that I can shut off the main power to. Because like whenever we're not watching TV or using it, the power is turned off completely to all the units. So there's no little green or red lights just sitting there um, waiting to be on standby. You know, because that all consumes energy. Um, the only clock that's running in the kitchen is the one that's on the oven because I know microwaves have them too, but luckily our microwave has a disable feature where I can just have no clock and it's just off unless I use it. Um, so whenever, even when I'm home, because I work from home, the only thing that's on during the day if I'm not writing, because I'm a writer and a painter, uh, if I'm not using the computer, the only thing that's running in my house is the refrigerator the freezer downstairs, but you need that. The clock on the oven and the aquarium. That's it. And maybe an alarm clock or two. Um, but really, that's it. I make sure everything else is shut off at night or whatnot. It really saves on the energy bill. It's really good with that. Um, and my wife and I, we like to experiment with a lot of stuff with like, uh, <clears throat> like with the coral reef stuff, making it different. Um, trying to see what else can be done that's different. And... Um, we're looking into new lighting, this and that. But uh, also, I have my aquarium lights on a timer. My tank lights are on about nine hours a day. But my little tank only uses 80 watts. I, do, I know they do make T5s for 75-gallon tanks that use very little energy. I forget how many watts, but it's under 100. And I just saw that today, so I don't know if that's new or whatnot. But, uh, and there's new um, power heads that are just coming out called like evolutions or something like that and they use half the energy of the ones that are in stores right now they just debuted so um so just in light of earth day i thought you know hey this would be good to show all of you i'm the live rock um unfortunately i don't have anything growing on it yet i can't wait to show you guys that so thanks for watching stick around and uh, have a good day